Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make these high-waisted jogger sweat shorts. I wanted to create a pair of shorts that I can lounge around the house in, but also it was stylish enough and kind of put together enough that I could walk out of the house and go to the grocery store or something really quick. So I did draft the pattern for these shorts and I did that on a separate video so that this video isn't so long So if you want to check that out, you can go ahead and click on the link below It's just called how to draft high-waisted jogger shorts And then I also have a video on how to draft the pockets as well So once you've gotten the pattern for the shorts and the pockets We're gonna go ahead and get started with our fabric. So for this project, I am using a fairly thick knit fabric It's almost sweatshirt like thick, but but it's not sweatshirt fabric. Underneath, it's not fuzzy like a sweatshirt. Um, they would, if you go to a store, just ask for a, a double face knit. Most of the time, they would have them available and they're, they're fairly thick in quality. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and fold your fabric in half and place the pattern right on top. This is gonna be the main pattern of the shorts here. And I went ahead and cut out two of this main pattern. Next up is the pocket. I placed the pocket pattern right on the fold of the fabric and I cut out two of these. Okay, switching back to the main pattern, go ahead and pin all the way along the center front and the center back of the pattern and sew on the center front and the center back. Once that is done, I'm going to match up the center front to the center back seam. This way I can see how the inseam is gonna line up. I pin that down and I sew across. Now I jump back to the pocket and I'm going to take the pocket and I am going to draw out the base stitch for the curves of the pocket at about a quarter of an inch, which is already accounted for in the pattern. Just gonna sew a really wide base stitch on that curve right there. Then I take the thread from that stitching and I pull so that it gathers the curve just a little bit. This way I can fold it inwards. The next thing I do is that I went ahead and ironed down the curve and the sides to a quarter of an inch and then the top will be an inch folded down. So I repeat this on the second pocket. So if you flip it over, everything is folded inwards to a quarter of an inch and the top is folded down at one inch. And the pattern has already accounted for for all of the seam allowances and I just use an iron with a lot of steam to do this. The fun part about these shorts is that they're very customizable, um, especially if you play around with the pocket design. So for this pair, I am going to add ruffles to the pockets. So I went ahead and I cut out a two inch strip. I don't really have a length for it. I just kind of eyeball the length um, and you know figure out how much I need as I go. So then I sew a base stitch in the middle of the two inch strip all the way across the length of the strip. Same deal here, I grab the bobbin thread on the basting stitch and I pull so it will gather up the strip. So here I'm pulling and gathering and then I match it to the length of the top of my pocket and then I trim. Keep in mind that the tighter you pull, the more it's gonna look gathered. The looser you pull, the less gathering it'll look. So um, this is the reason why there isn't an actual length when you're cutting out strips because you don't know what kind of look you want for your ruffles. Um, so I went ahead and just chopped some of it off right here and then I'm gonna match it to my pocket. So I trim up the ruffles and then I sew right on top of the ruffles through the base stitch and through the top of part of the pocket so that it attaches to the pocket. Next, take the two pockets and place it right on your shorts by pinning them down. And the best way to sew it is to actually open up one leg and place the pocket flat like so. Um, I like to do it the other way first so I can see what they look like on the sides, but once you get the look that you want, um, you can go ahead and just really pin it down and sew along the edge a nice top stitch. 
Next, it's sewing the waistband. And for this waistband, it is going to be two inches thick. Um, it's going to hold two elastics and one drawstring. And the pattern has already accommodated for the two inches of waistband. So I fold down the waistband two inches and I pin all the way around. And then below the fold by 3 eighths of an inch, I sew a straight line all the way around, leaving a little gap at the center back so that I can insert the elastic. Next, I use a 5 16th of an inch elastic and I measure it all the way around my waist minus about 3 inches or so because you want it to be a little stretchy. And then I feed the elastic through the casing and you're supposed to use a safety pin here but I didn't have one so I'm just using a paper clip and um, the little gap that was left from the center back earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and feed the elastic through there. Once the elastic has made it through the channel, you're going to go ahead and butt the ends together or overlap them like I'm doing over here and then just sew a straight line a couple times backwards and forwards so that it is nice and secure. And then you're going to give the waist a quick little pull so that it will distribute the elastic all the way around the waist. And then the opening from earlier, I went ahead and I just sewed that closed. Now below this elastic, um, by 3 eighths of an inch, I'm going to sew another line and that is going to be casing number 2. It's literally the same thing as last time. I went ahead and I fed the elastic through that casing and I pulled it all the way through about the ends together and then I also sewed that so that it is secure. And again, where there is the opening for that second casing, I went ahead and I sewed that shut. And below that by 3 eighths of an inch, I went ahead and I sewed another line all the way around the waistband. For this casing, I sewed all the way around and I did not leave a gap because in the front, about an inch away from the center front, I'm going to create a little snip on both sides. So then on another piece of fabric, I went ahead and I cut out a strip about an inch and a half wide. And the length is approximately a third longer than your waist measurement. So I take the strip and I fold it in half and I sew the raw edges all the way down. Pull the whole thing inside out. Honestly, you can use a ribbon, a string, a shoelace, anything that you want to use as a drawstring. Now back to the safety pin or paper clip method and I feed it through one of the little slit in front of the shorts and I just pull it all the way around the casing. So then I pull the drawstring all the way through and I even it out through the waist a little bit here. And then in the front, I just match up the length and I trim it up. So for the ends of the drawstring, I do tie a knot at the end so that if I'm washing them, they don't get lost up in the waistband again. And that is it for these shorts. I pop them on with a t-shirt and a jacket and they're totally awesome for lounging, going grocery shopping. I can even work out in these if I wanted to, like light yoga. I do love the fact that the pockets are huge because then it can hold my phone, my AirPods, my keys, or my wallet, or all the necessities that I need during the day. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you like it down below. If you're gonna try it out actually, please tag me. I would love to see it. You can do all the stuff like liking the video, comment, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. But anyways, stay safe out there, you guys, and I will check you out in the next video. Bye!